moving on to a little bit more on the data analytics. This is briefly mentioned in the manual of CDS from Axelos. We won't go into too much detail on this. Uh, it's just a familiarity with this. So there could be data coming from internally within the organization or it can be from the uh, social media or wherever. Uh, for example, it could be about sales of uh, uh, products, uh, the company's product or a similar products in the market and uh, lots of data about uh, amount of sales by geography by uh, or it could not be a one product but several products from several companies uh, by geography by product line by pricing by uh, feedback and so on and um, usually it, first the data has to be engineered so there will be some ingestion of data profiling of data and transformation so ingestion is about uh, loading the data because the data can be enormous, there should be some efficient methods to load the data into the system. And once it is loaded, it has to be profiled, meaning it has to be processed and uh, um, maybe categorized and filtered, classified, etc., so that some meaning can be pulled out, so that uh, some analysis can be done. Imagine uh, lots of data has been ingested but not properly segregated, classified, and uh, tabulated, etc. So that is known as profiling. So profiling is a simple task. However, um, well, simple compared to the other ones which is coming up, the transformation. The transformation is, is much different from ingestion, which is the loading part and profiling, which is the classification and uh, the keeping it ready for analysis. But transformation is um, moving the data into a totally different format. For example, the profile data may have to be read by a machine learning program. To do that, the machine learning may expect certain format of the data. Therefore, we need maybe some other software to transform the profile data into a data which could be probably read by a Python program, yeah, like the Python programming language, which is used extensively for uh, uh, machine learning. And once it is done, and then this goes on and on until the entire data has been transformed. There may be multiple cycles of uh, profiling. In fact, you could have the cycles of ingestion also and then uh, transform it. And once it is transformed, it goes to the data science itself. This is where the research is done on the, on the data which has been made available, transformed into the right way. And then it is analyzed by the expert system. So, and uh, once the analysis is done, the results will start coming out. So it is able to predict uh, what can happen in the future. So there could be predictions like uh, this product will not sell anymore after the next seven months or uh, a particular competitor is gaining market share and by the end of the year their market share which is currently 5% will become 10%. So these are uh, conclusions which cannot be derived by normal technical systems. The normal uh, business intelligence systems focus more on uh, simpler scenarios they can uh, help a company to make decision about which products are working which are not and in some cases they also help with the competitive products as well but here data analytics uh, is much more intelligent in terms of uh, doing this kind of uh, predictions and for example um, uh, you know if this uh, in this covid uh, situation uh, if you have a really good system it may be able to predict uh, when this virus will totally go away but probably they are not being able to do that or predict it yet. Anyway, that's a different topic. And eventually prescription. Systems should also be able to prescribe what to do next. It can prescribe that uh, product number three uh, should be targeted for sales or product number four should be slightly improved and targeted for higher sales. And we look at this step visualization. Once the prediction is done, um, some kind of uh, proper dashboarding or reporting should be allowed. To, um, um, it can be done anytime. It can be done for analysis uh, to visualize the results of analysis. What's going on? Okay. What's not going on? Okay. And also the visualization of the the predicted information as to what can happen in the future, what will not happen in the future. Both can be visualized. And then uh, prescription. Again, during prescription, we cannot totally uh, prescribe. The system cannot will not prescribe totally based on the predictions. It may again look at uh, some feedback from other areas. Yeah. Or after prescribing, uh, while prescribing, it may uh, look at more information uh, from the market. 
and add it to uh, take it back to previous um, uh, steps so there's more there are like feedback loops here so that um, the data is not one time it's not static while this analysis is going on while the prediction is going on and prescription is going on it's quite dynamic that it can react to sudden changes in the markets or situations and uh, immediately change the the status of the the results so this is um, just a brief view of um, how it works however if you are into uh, deeper into this subject uh, you will be more familiar with the tools and techniques uh, and the special specific software which is being used uh, for all this like um, there are other tools which i rec am recollecting like r tableau uh, yes you know hadoop r and tableau these were the the standard recognized tools but uh, we are seeing more and more other tools like selonis and uh, talend ending with a d a rapid minor and all that or nime k n i m e in uh, constant information miners these are some of the other tools uh, which are coming up which have a lot more intelligence big data is another um, related term is slightly connected to the same uh, data analytics uses big data that's how we can uh, say big data is more about the data itself it's not about the analysis of that but it's about uh, the large volumes of uh, data to handle it can be structured semi structured it could be like several images or large files uh, videos or um, albums yeah well albums are made up of uh, pictures and unstructured data could be information from different books libraries and so on so that is known as unstructured data meaning uh, um, there may be a certain paragraph uh, from different books on the same idea right um, so that's the meaning of uh, unstructured data and how do we extract meaningful information from the big data it requires a lot more processing power uh, cpus uh, multiple cpus analytical capabilities and skills um, skills meaning people have to understand and think about which kind of algorithms and systems can handle this big data uh, because uh, the data analytics systems so whatever we talked about be it hadoop or be it uh, information miners they will be working on big data so there's a close connection between the analytics and the big data so it's very difficult to say where is the boundary between big data and the analytics because both both of them are are uh, together but big data on its own focuses more on uh, the large volumes and the data itself what is the best way of uh, storing what is the best way of retreating what is the fastest way of accessing them so it's connect a lot more with the database technologies rather than analytical technologies so there are some database systems which allow big data handling some database traditional ones which do not allow big data handling and uh, we need to assume that the analytic systems should facilitate handling of big data because analytics is usually done on the big data not on the normal data so complexity of the data can be based on its size its structure the type numbers text etc whatever or uh, special characters characters from different languages and uh, what is the query language to be used a simple query language um, a common english can the system understand common english or does the system need to be programmed uh, it can understand only a programming language like a sql language what are the sources of data and uh, what is the growth rate the data can grow very fast uh, very soon particularly due to social media so many threads of discussions yeah. okay there are some more technologies to deal with as we move forward collaboration in workflow there's a connection here with the uh, supporting the agile methods usually organizations which collaborate a lot are also agile they like to work in uh, deliver products frequently keep on adding features to existing products frequently 
quick response times and that can be done only when people are empowered and when they collaborate uh, like the sales people have to collaborate with the development uh, people uh, the sales people can cannot no can no longer go and sell products uh, can no longer just make commitments to the customer without having a, a very detailed dialogue with the development people because the development team can command uh, how many features can they deliver in a certain uh, time frame so sales can only commit that on the other hand the sales people can put pressure on the development team that hey if you guys can deliver only uh, uh, 10 features in two weeks we are not going to sell anything so there'll be uh, negotiations of that nature and both parties have to understand each other when they collaborate with each other and because of the agile ways of working and the collaborative way of working a lot of tools are uh, coming up or have come up uh, these tools make to need to make the work visible to different people what different people are doing how is the work assignment among the team members what are the customer requirements which are frequently changing yes, those things need to be visible to everybody every day there may be changes to needs uh, specific uh, software requirements may change and it uh, should allow people to work in forums uh, i should be able to initiate a thread on a certain topic and uh, there should be a moderator who can segregate the threads uh, who uh, somebody should be reviewing the comments uh, so that um, uh, unwanted comments are not posted to everybody uh, just because somebody is in an angry mood certain comments may have to be deleted yeah so all that uh, will come smaller teams smaller agile teams usually a tendency to have between five to nine people in an agile team however you can have a large agile organization where you have several agile teams um, contributing to the organization that's why they have agile uh, program management and agile portfolio management as well a lot of feedback mechanisms very simple like a daily meeting quick meeting about feedback or um, usually the feedback on product is at the end of a phase end of a sprint a short meeting to uh, uh, obtain feedback from the customer or user representatives and also internal lessons learned like ret retrospective meetings uh, social media features should be there collaboration features should be there meaning there should be a possibility to uh, exchange messages uh, in real time or uh, contribute ideas into the tool and also like ideas social media features and tag uh, people who are supporting the idea so there are tools in the market uh, for example slack is a very popular tool uh, microsoft teams is another one which uh, comes to my memory or uh, agile atlassian uh, has been a pioneer in uh, agile tools uh, like jira is one of their tools which is well known and asana there are others like asana uh, which are also popular yeah so there are several in the market i won't be able to list all of them but um, these are some of the collaborative tools uh, and uh, please do explore uh, depending on your own needs uh, which tool you would like to use uh, 